Welcome to the Atheist Experience Live. I'm Matt Delaney. Joining me this week, Tracy Harris. Hello. It's been a while since. Uh, it's, it's been a while since I've been on. I guess maybe you've been on more recently. I think I probably have. Uh, there's been so many things going on. We're live. Today's February 26, 2012. Uh, welcome everybody. It's good to be back. And uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a live public access television program sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin. You can find out more about the ACA, including a frequently asked questions page and. Uh, information about how to contact us at www.atheist-community.org. Um, we've got a calendar of events up there as well as uh, information about uh, message boards and email addresses and things like that. Um, and as it's a live call-in show, we'll have the number up for you very soon. If you don't get through on the phones today or you don't want to, you can always email tv at atheist-community.org and that goes to all the people involved with the show. We can't possibly answer all the email that comes comes in. I'm, uh, I got almost caught up and now because of the debate that I went to and everything else I'm a couple hundred behind again but uh, it's the never-ending cycle. In addition to this program the ACA also sponsors a couple of podcasts one of them the nonprofits that's P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. You can see at the bottom of the screen, www.nonprofitsradio.com. That's been on hiatus for the month of February while we were moving. We're hoping to be back and live next Saturday, assuming no technical difficulties. Um, and the Godless Bitches. And I don't know exactly when their next episode's going to be, but I imagine it's going to be just as soon as I get all the equipment set back up. Uh, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of things that we'd all like to talk about. I actually took to recording... Uh, videos with my cell phone while I, you know, just put it in the little mountain and recorded me talking to myself about yeah. the things that were uh, annoying me or issues we had to actually address. So the ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday, and it used to be at Romeo's on Barton Springs Road, but uh, Romeo's is currently unavailable. And so I think this week we went to Schlotsky's, and I think that the uh, meetup is scheduled to continue there. But if not, you can uh, check the website and the Facebook page for more information as, as things change. And there's a weekly happy hour at the Dog and Duck uh, every Thursday beginning at around 7 o'clock. I just got back uh, this past week, Thursday actually, uh, I was in a debate at uh, West Texas A&M in Amarillo uh, that was sponsored by Free Thought Oasis. So uh, very, very grateful to the guys at Free Thought Oasis, uh, Rodney and, and all the folks there who, who set up this debate um, along with the university. Uh, my opponent was a gentleman by the name of Abdu Murray, who uh, runs his own uh, organization. He's a former Muslim who is now a Christian, and his, uh, I think it's Aletheia is the, the organization, and it's specifically about apologetics for cult members, Muslims, Jews. Um, we didn't get a chance to actually talk a lot about that. The subject of the debate was, should America be a nation under God? And uh, I just... There was the video of the debate should be up soon. You can keep an eye out on my Facebook page or on the Facebook page for Free Thought Oasis. Um, and as soon as it's posted, we'll let everybody know. I can't. I, I don't want to. I don't want to comment on you know how I think the debate went or, or give any details until people have actually had a chance to watch it. But we did have a packed house. The estimates were somewhere between 600 and 700 people uh, in a room that was you know, originally four to five hundred chairs in there. We kind of expanded out. Uh, and it lasted almost, well, the debate part, I think, was over after an hour and some change. Uh, but I was there for three hours. So there were a lot of uh, questions back and forth afterwards, um, people coming up to, to say hello. And I just realized I said, uh, or, um, like 20 times in the last minute. See, I'm out of practice. That's what happens when you do, do a live show all the time. How are you? I'm doing great. Do you have any news bits or items that you uh, need to address before we just jump right into calls? I don't, but I thought if you, your note was kind of a funny story, that one a little earlier. Oh, the note that I was given? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here you go. 
<laughs> there was somebody who came up after the debate who uh, didn't get a chance to answer Can I show a, it? Ask their question. Sure. Uh, didn't get a chance to ask the, their question and, and didn't really want to stick around to, to talk after Can her or was unable to. I don't know. See, you, you've tricked them. Oh, there's no cameraman in here. Oh, there's. They oh, they, oh in. my apologies. John's coming into Zoom. So yeah. she came up and, and handed me this, uh, which if you can't read it, uh, you can read it. Yeah, yeah. It says, I. let's see. I think it does not matter how God created Earth and us. I think it matters that he did it. And this was, it, what made me chuckle was earlier when you said, um, you know, if somebody wants to call in or if you, you know, if you don't want to call in. And I was like, yeah, yeah why wouldn't you want to talk to Matt? Well, apparently that would be why. Well, there were two, that, you know, by, by and large, um, uh, I, I really enjoyed Abdu Murray. I thought we got along well. We actually have some similarities in our background, both of us having gone from uh, one religious view to some a different view of religion uh, and having, you know, interactions with family members about stuff like that. Most of the uh, people that came up afterwards were, were positive or genuinely interested in having a conversation. There were, though, two individuals who came up that were a little bit frustrating. The, very, frustrating. the very first person to come up after the debate came over to say, you know, hey, I'll pray for you. And I do my best to just, you know, I, I don't know, do I, do I say thank you? <laughs> you know, um, I wish you wouldn't. Uh, you know, please don't sacrifice any animals while you're doing this. But he then kind of turned nasty it was almost kind of passive aggressive well that's when somebody says that um i'll pray for you you know that's that's part of your i think quandary about how to respond because i think there are to some degree people who are just legitimately um trying to say something nice mm -hmm. but then you have like you say the passive aggressive person who is using it in order to make a dig or be rude and it's almost like the people that say merry christmas in order to be vile yeah. instead of to be genuinely wishing you something yeah. merry merry christmas yeah instead of taking it and making it a nice gesture you know you turn something that's supposed to be a nice gesture into into a weapon and a way to offend people on purpose yeah he did a little spiel um so he went from you know hey i want to let you know that uh i'll be praying for you and and immediately followed that up with i don't believe there's any such thing as an atheist and if you were in a uh a war zone with bullets flying over your uh, head. All you atheists are, are crying out to God at that point. And 9-11 sent people back to churches while all you atheists did was sit around and cry. And at that point, I was actually, you know, uh, more than a little irritated. Because this wasn't just a, you know, I wanted to, I, you know, let me pray for you. We disagree. This was right. um, somebody who sat there for an entire debate without really paying attention to a single thing I said about who I am or what I believe, uh, with, without even grasping, right. uh, you know, that there are atheists and uh, that believes that there aren't atheists, and then does this whole no atheists in foxhole things. So as he was, he wanted, he wanted to get his little dig in and immediately turn to walk away. Sure. And I wasn't having any of it. And I was pointing out that, you know, not only uh, was Jen, who's here regularly, an atheist in a foxhole, but you had people like uh, Pat Tillman. And there are countless others, including the Military Association of Atheists and Freethinkers. Yeah. And well, the, there's veterans. They're like a veteran group for, yeah. There's veteran groups as well. And so, you know, this, this idea is just complete nonsense. And it can only come from somebody who, it, it's actually a bit of a, dig because when he said it, it was basically an accusation of cowardice. Uh, you know, that we would, uh, under those situations, we would be so cowardly that we would just automatically break, break, down, uh, and... break, break down our intellectual barriers and cry out to a god just in case. Um, which I think actually tells us a lot more about the gentleman who was talking to me sure. than anybody else. Uh, evidently, that's the way he feels. He well, would and let me just point out, too, like from a communication perspective, a lot of times people are talking about themselves when they believe they're telling you about you. Yeah. And this is a good example of that. So in other words, what this gentleman is saying is, I am so inclined to do this that I cannot imagine anyone even thinking differently than me. And he's letting you know, this is, this is exactly what I think I would do. Yeah. And, and he's framing it in a way to try to say, you know, this is what anyone would do. But that's just a way of sort of either, you know, demonst well. demonstrating how cemented it is in your own mind that this is what you would do, that you can't even conceive that a person would react differently than you would. Yeah. yeah. And the second individual that, that was, you know, 
he came up and he was obviously upset. Um, I was as nice as, as, as I think I could be. I, and we, we didn't even really dig into, you know, nasty details about religion. I didn't talk about how uh, the God of the Bible is immoral and that Christianity is a, a, a divisive perversion of morality um, and then how people who, you know, have uh, adopted this religion are, you know, actually contributing to harm in the world, uh, in addition to a lot of good. Uh, I didn't even touch on any of those things. So, I mean, this was like one of the least potentially offensive uh, debate topics ever. It was, should America be a nation under God? And my argument was basically, absolutely not. That's patently absurd. The Constitution uh, prohibits any religious test for public office. The First Amendment guarantees religious freedom. And even though some reactionary McCarthy era folks have gone and edited the Pledge of Allegiance and changed the national motto, I think we should stop before we start adding words to the, you know, the poem on the, on the Statue of Liberty um, and actually embrace the government of the people, by the people, for the people, that the power to govern comes from the consent you know, of the governed. And I, you know, it, there's a, there was a lot there to touch on, and it was basically about liberty and freedom. And one of the key points that I made was that if you believe in a God and you believe that this God wants your country to be in deference, to that God, well, of course, you believe that we should, um, but you only sh should believe that if you also don't value religious freedom, because there's no guarantee that your particular view of God is the one that's going to get imposed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, your protection this, to believe and worship as you choose comes from the idea that it's not imposed on you. Yeah. So it's important to keep government out of that for people who are religious to maintain that freedom. And this, this was an individual who was clear, evidently so just uh, outright offended by my very existence and presence and the fact that I was willing to, to speak at all. And, and he came up and, you know, we had a couple of minutes of back and forth where he's standing there and he's, he's clearly irritated and he's like, I'm not, I, want, I want to let you know that I'm here showing compassion to you. Um, and that's not me. I'm not the kind of person who's capable of showing this compassion. It's God that is keeping me compassionate towards you. And it was clear that if he didn't sincerely believe this, that he would have wanted to punch me or, or something else. That, that he merely is incapable, he's completely incapable of accepting that there are people who disagree with him and are willing to talk about it. I yeah. mean, that's the real crux of what happened. We have a disagreement about something and we were talking about it. And, you know, I told him, I said, you know, I, I don't believe you. You know, I don't believe that this, you're only being compassionate because there's a God holding you back. Um, and that, you know, oh my gosh, and now you're calling me a liar. No, sir, I'm not calling you a liar. I think you sincerely believe that. Right. Um, I think you're telling me what you believe to be the truth. I just think you're mistaken. Right. Um, now, from my point of view, I have no way of distinguishing between you uh, showing restraint on your own and you showing restraint because some God is restraining you. Until you give me a way right. of telling the difference between the two, they're identical. And this, this just wasn't getting through. <laughs> and you know, it didn't surprise me so much that it wasn't getting through. But when he, when he said, no, 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 you know, I, you know, I was this terrible person before, and God's made me better, and you know, now I'm, I'm able to show you compassion, even though it's not what I actually want to do. And I said, well, that just makes me really sad. And boy, that kind of sent him over the top. And <laughs> God must have had to restrain him just a little bit harder. It's almost um, like you, there's no way to even be kind to the person. Like, it's just going to make him more and more angry that you, you know, that you're not. I, I don't know if it, what they, what a person like that would want. I wanted to go over and grab Abdul Murray uh -huh. and have him come over and have this guy, have the three of us have a talk, because Abdul at no point. We were we were laughing and you know you know very friendly with each other um, and I think I liked him I think he might have, might have liked me a little bit but we had a good time there was no animosity or hostility sure and so I would have liked I think it would probably have been a really good idea to have do talk to that guy about you know you need to learn how to deal with the fact that there are people in this world who disagree <laughs> with you right and you know. It, it may be the case that God was holding him back from punching me in the face for Jesus. Um, and, and, you know, if, if that's the case, I'm happy. I'm, I'm just happy that it didn't turn into anything nasty. It is really interesting, though, how sometimes people get upset when someone doesn't believe what they believe or agree with them. And I, I think it's, it's a bit weird because the fact that I do or don't agree with someone else has zero impact in their capacity to believe it. Mm -hmm. So it's like what, you, what it means to you and what you believe is not determined by whether or not I agree with you. 
So I in no way can impose on your ability to believe a thing or to value it, however you want to value it. And so there's no real benefit to convincing me of it. Um, if that convincing is about making yourself feel better, if you're going to get upset if I don't agree or believe it, then it's sort of weird because it does nothing for you. So that's the one thing I don't get. I mean, I do get the idea of wanting to talk to people and change minds and get people to you know, look at things and reason through things. And I can understand from a religious perspective somebody who believes it saying, I want to convert someone because I sure. believe their soul is in jeopardy. And I get that. I just, what I don't get is somebody getting really upset when you say, I don't agree with this. Or, and they're just like, I, I would just punch you in the face if God weren't holding me back. And it's like, really, why does this upset you? Because no one's stopping you from believing it. Yeah, and, and he came up to, to also to object to something that he heard me say that I didn't say. Um, I'm going to have to pay attention. Uh, anybody who watches the debate, see if at any point in the, during the debate I talked about convi being convicted by God and whether or not that's enough. Because he seemed to, to see, he came up and he was mad that he felt personally convicted by God and that this should be sufficient to justify belief and that I was saying that it wasn't. Uh, I, I don't even know that we went down that road at all. But I don't want to make this uh, all about the debate, yeah. especially since it hasn't been posted. So keep an eye out on the Facebook page, and we'll go ahead and start taking some callers here real quick. Uh, William in North Carolina, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Great. Thanks for, thanks for waiting. Uh, no problem. I called yesterday, and I, I don't know if I got cut off or y'all hung up before y'all made got to hear the counterpoint, but it was about um, child preaching. Well, we weren't here yesterday, so... Well, whoever, I, I know, I'm sorry, Russell and a first-timer, I couldn't catch his name. He was I, I, last I week. I think you mean last week? That's fine, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what, what was the question? Um, about child preachers, like how abusive is it? Do y'all feel it is? Chi I, I watched a special the other day um, called Pint Size Preachers, I think, on... I don't know if it was on history or whatever, that, that chronicled a couple of uh, young uh, kids who are, well, one of them is almost a teenager and is actually like an active minister, and the other one's like four or five who's clearly just mimicking his parents and babbling, babbling incoherently. Uh, and yet, wow. And yet uh, the congregation's, you know, putting him up there in front of everybody and going right along with it and encouraging this, and I think it, it tells us a lot about, uh, you know, the theater aspect of religion. Um, and, and I found it interesting that people were nodding and agreeing with sentences that made no sense, uh, that weren't, weren't actually sentences. It was word, word, the name of the place we're in, you know, like Hello Cleveland type thing, um, and then Jesus, and then, yay, can't you feel the spirit moving through him? Uh, I, I don't know how harmful it is on, on the kids. Um, I don't get the impression that his parents are forcing him to do this. I don't, I don't think in his case it's like uh, another Marjo, um, which, by the way, if you haven't seen the documentary Marjo, uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. Um, so, yeah, I, I really couldn't say. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, eliminating religious indoctrination for kids, but it, I'm not a fan of legislating that. I think I would just like to add that anytime you use children for something, not just this, but there's a lot of, I think, a lot of different roles that you can put a child into like that where you're throwing them up in front of people for um, validation. And to me, my concern with that is the um, high potential for, I guess, exploitation. And I, so I, I think that would be what would concern me is, is um, exploiting the child and also confusing them a little bit with the validation for particular things because a child, I mean, especially small children, um, are looking for approval. Uh, they want their parents to approve of them and they are at an age where approval is extremely important. And so when you start approving of things or giving them you know, massive approval for particular behaviors, um, you have to think about what that means because this is not an adult that's processing this approval. Right. Well, you said something about legislating, and I don't even know if it would be so much legislating as in somewhat to a degree enforcing rules because there's no way that you can convince me that they are getting a proper education. I mean, I don't um, think it just seems so ignorant. I, I don't think that 
that we can say that simply because they're getting that they're being educated about religious issues that they're not also being educated properly about other issues in some cases that's true in some cases you know if they're if they're being schooled that the earth is six thousand years old uh... yes they may hear it in their in their public school if they're allowed to go to public schools uh... that that the earth is much older and those two things are in conflict um, i think by and large i'm optimistic that the that the truth will win out but at least they have received that education the fact that they're getting an education that undermines that as well um, is a separate issue and it's about freedom well and that has nothing to do with the child preachers that could apply to any child yes well yeah but a lot of them are homeschooled so if they don't get public school then how can they get exposed to proper science and may probably other other subjects well, home, homeschooling doesn't automatically mean you don't get a good education. As a matter of fact, there are some some uh, studies showing that some homeschoolers actually outperform public school kids. Yeah, and, and homeschooling is not only the venue of religious people, too. I mean, I would point out that there's a, there are people at homeschool that are not religious. Right, and I don't have an issue with those, but, like, well, I guess what, well, now we're getting kind of on two different subjects called again. Yeah, I guess I got nothing more to add on that. And all right. Well, thanks for calling. Right. Well, yeah, I think everybody's yeah. in favor of education, and and I definitely think that it, you know there are some states where homeschooling it probably wouldn't hurt for them to have a little bit more, I guess, oversight. Oversight, yeah. Over what's being taught and a curriculum that needs to be, you know, at least a baseline requirement. And we got Eric in Arizona. How are you, Matt? I'm doing pretty well. It's like paradise over here today. So, is it? How's, what's the weather like in Arizona? I think. Let me look here. We're at 82 degrees, perfectly blue skies. Just got through enjoying laying out, catching some rays, and so um, headed to go get something cool to drink now and um, enjoying the day. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was 82 here a week ago, and it will be again in a week. But we're we're having a slight cold snap this week, so. Yeah, I've, I've been down to Austin before, and I'm actually looking forward to coming down there uh, sometime within the next year. Um, and it's it's an awesome city, so I'm sure you enjoy it. I I, I love it. My wife's not so much. Uh, it's a little too warm for her, but so what do you have for well, us? Well, I used to live in Hill Country, so uh, down down in the Kerrville area. I don't know if you know where that's at. Fredericksburg, yeah, and so it's it's beautiful. But uh, hey, uh, wanted to give a call and ask. Do you remember? Did you ever used to watch Seinfeld? On rare occasions, I I, ne I wasn't like a regular viewer. Is that right? You know who Kramer is, don't you? Yes. Okay, there was an episode where Kramer was taking karate. You didn't by chance see that, did you? Yeah, with the little kid. He had a child in his class. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so you know, just to just to go ahead and set it up, here's what's happening. Kramer's taking these karate classes, and he's been inviting Jerry and Julie to uh, come down and watch him do his testing. And he's talking about how he's dominating the class, and they're like, "Really? Wow, that's awesome!" And they get on to his testing, and when they get to the class, they find out that the the people that are in his class are all basically between nine and thirteen years old, and He's just, you know, he's, he's fighting these kids and dominating the class. Well, um, the reason that I bring that up is because Kramer was getting this big high out of, you know, the fact that he was number one in the class. Mm -hmm. And it sort of reminded me of the opportunities that I've had to listen to a few of your shows. I haven't listened to a lot of your shows. Yeah, I, I, knew, um, I knew you were going this direction. <laughs> And, and you know what I'm going to say. Yeah, and, and I know that it's I know that it's asinine because we take on anybody. We've had professional apologists on here, and I run around right. the country debating them, including Abdul Murray just this past week. And I'll debate William Lane Craig as soon as he stops being a coward. And can I and, add that yeah. nobody on our nobody on our program has any sort of degree in theology, has any sort of degree in philosophy, has any sort of like debating history. Matt has just recently started debating because he's being asked. And, we and, don't have any. Right. We're not professional. And I haven't anything. run around to anybody saying how I'm kicking the asses of all the people <laughs> in the class either. So, no, no, you're, you're right, you're right, and I'll give, you, I'll give you all of that, and as a matter of fact, you know as well as I do, William Lane Craig will not debate you, and yeah. we all know why, 
because he's a coward. I, I, I guess my, my, my point in saying that, and I don't want you to take my point wrong, my point is simply that it has the appearance so many times, it can have the appearance to the listeners that, that your position is the right position. It is. And, and I'm just saying that, that it, it makes it a whole lot easier coming across that way when you, you're on a court that's your home, you know, your home field and you're bringing in guys that basically are, it's, it's, it's like a beginning tennis player go up against Andre Agassi. Well, thank, um, thanks for that comparison, but it's also easier when you're right. William Lane Craig and the, and the higher theolo theologians and stuff uh, that don't want to debate, they don't have any arguments that are any better than any that anybody has ever called in and presented. We've addressed every contemporary argument for the existence of God, and when people don't call in and, pre and, and present them, we've actually gone out of our way to present them for people. The, the, yeah. There's no better arguments out there, so it's not like, you know... Uh, <laughs> Wait, I still, I still have to address, I, I don't understand, I guess, the connection with Andre Agassi, because what is it, like, for example, let me just use myself, what is it in my background that makes you think that I am somehow a professional atheist? You know what, I'm, I'm not, and don't take this offensively, I'm just not really that familiar with, I've only watched just a few shows, I... Yeah, I'm just saying from the what gives, Matt, what so gives I'm me, not necessarily addressing you, but, right, but, but let me just say this. What gives that, Matt any kind of an edge? Like, what makes you think Matt is, a pro, is some kind of a professional or that he somehow let, let has... Me, let me tell you, look, the excellent question. Here's, here's the reason why. Because 90% of the people who call in have probably never, at least a theist, have probably never studied theology and apologetics. And so Matt has fielded tons of questions and... And he also is simply able to ask questions that, that may be apologetics 101, but the person who calls in doesn't know those answers. Okay, but well, shame here's, here's on them for not studying oh, their own religion. Let me just say this. This is what I would like to do, Matt, if you're willing to. I'd like to go ahead and debate you. Sure, when? I mean, do you have some way you to arrange this? How about right now? I'll, I'll, debate you, I'll debate you on air. Well, no, because what I want to do is, is let me just say what, what we need to do is in order to go ahead and debate, I would like to set it up where we have a, a formal procedure, and a significant part of that procedure needs to be cross-examination. And, um, you know, we'll go ahead and give time to make our points, and, and I'm willing to go ahead and have a few debates, and we can start the first debate out simply on the existence of God. Because when, when we finish that, Simply. then I would go ahead and build upon that foundation after I go okay. ahead and... There won't, be a foundation. there won't be a foundation to build on, but where, where, do, where and when do you want to do this? Because it's not happening on the show. Right. It, I, I guess I, if, if this is the reason you called, this would have been much better suited for an email. This is not a call topic. But I mean, topic. You know, it's, it's a topic we can discuss. But yeah, that's show. fine. I mean, if Matt wants to do this, that's fine. It's okay for you to invite Matt to debate, and it's fine if you guys debate, but this should have been requested in an email. Okay, so we wouldn't be able to do this on the show, Matt? No, it's and, and just it's, so you it's know, a college... I've previous experience debate, here, here, just, just so sure. you know, so I'm familiar with, what? you know, the way the debate works. And I've debated yeah, some yeah, guys that I don't, you I don't, know. I don't care. It's one of those, right. I, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me right. if you'd never done it before, if you'd been doing it your entire okay. life. When I went to this past debate this, this last Thursday, um, I didn't even bother to look up anything about the person I was debating until the day, of, day before the debate when I was in the airport. Because it doesn't matter to me the person who's making the argument or what their credentials are. Their arguments stand or fall on their own merits. That's just the way it is. Now, the reason, the reason, the reason we can't do a formal structured debate on this show is because we've tried in the past to have really long calls and it hurts the show this is a, a call-in show but if, I'm, I'm happy to debate you know as long as it's not you know just us two sitting around coffee talking which I've done before too but I you know, would prefer there be somebody to see it because the chances of you changing my mind or me changing your mind are probably pretty slim so it needs to be you need to you need to figure out when and where you want to do this make it a deal I'll public I'll talk about it on the show we'll post it on Facebook and we can do it it's not like I've ducked anybody who's ever asked to debate Right. Unlike so, so William Lane Craig. Yeah. But let me ask you, the debates, the formal debates that you had, do you feel like you lost any of those debates? No. Is that right? And, and what would the opposing side say, the theist side? Well, they would say I lost every one of them, probably. Really? Okay. Don't you think, don't you think that that's the way most debates look? From, by, Not the debates I've had. From the standpoint of most... Oh, oh really? 
When I debated George Smith, you can go on the internet and it says that it was very unsatisfying watching an atheist get trounced. I said most. I didn't say all. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying you don't. You don't, uh, you don't think that most debates, most people probably come out with I an do. opinion in favor of the person that they had an opinion with when they walked in. I do. I agree. Okay. With that. So yeah, absolutely. We, so we agree. So well, I don't know what the so point I'm, about. I'm, I'm just saying that that um, I don't. Um, I, I, I don't think that would be the case if you and I debated, but, um, again, So you think you're going to be converting uh, atheists if we debate? Do I think what? I, so you don't think that'll be the case if we debate, so I, I, are, I you, are you expecting when, to lose? I do think that if we debated when it was done, if a vote was taken, I think that they would say you lost the debate. Okay. Well, if you want to have a, if, you know, I don't really care about the, the votes. I don't really care about a win-loss thing, by the way. Most of the, you know, when we went into this debate on Thursday, we had a discussion ahead of time. It's not so much about winning and losing. It's about presenting your case. And did you have a vote at the end? No, there was no vote at the end. Okay. I, because it wasn't arranged. I didn't set any of that up, but I don't care either way. But if you want to have right. a vote at the end and, and stroke your ego out of it, that's fine. And yeah. that, none of it yeah. makes any difference. None of it makes one bit of difference to whether or not you're actually right. Now, if you'd like, you know, it's 501. If you'd like to make a quick argument for the existence of God, a, a single point that we could maybe address on the show, you know, apart from us just sitting here jousting back and forth about nothing, sure. that'd be great. Otherwise, I'm going to go to another caller. Sure. No, we can go through. We can, we can run through some stuff real quick on sure. the existence of God. Um, I, I will just go ahead and give you some real quick points that I think demonstrate its existence, and you can tell me what you think about it. Uh, can, you, can, can you narrow it down to like one or two? I'm going to narrow it down to seven premises that will prove the point. They're very quick. They're like brainless. I mean, they're so simple, you'll, you sh I, I believe you'll agree with every one of them. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Can I we bet start, you're wrong. We'll start with premise number one. And premise number one is simply that something cannot come from nothing. I trust you accept that. No, I don't. Okay, so you're, you're going to now, – now let's go ahead and do this, Matt. If – you're going to go ahead and you're going to reject it. I'm more than happy to have you reject it, but, but in order to do that, since you're so scientific and so reasonable, you're going to base everything you believe upon evidence. What I want you to do is if I said to you, Matt, fire does not burn paper, you're going to go ahead and you're going to say, well, you know what, we got a billion examples where fire burns paper. Mm -hmm. Now, you just said that something can come from nothing. I want you to go ahead and give me the scientific examples where something came from nothing. And I know you're not going to go to the, the, the Lawrence Krauss example because... You and I both know that when, when Lawrence Krauss talks about something coming from nothing, that he's talking about empty space with low level of energy. I did not say empty space and low level of energy. I said nothing. So if you're going to counter the point, simply go ahead and, and give me the, the, the reason and the scientific evidence where you have nothing and something has come from nothing. Can you give me one example where that happened? Are you done now? Yeah. Yeah, because you said something cannot come from nothing, and you thought I would agree with you. And I'm not asserting that something can come from nothing. My position was that I do not necessarily accept that something cannot come from nothing. And okay, I was, now, in fact, now again, I you're was in a reasonable person. You better, you better let me, you better let me finish. You, can you, you go better and let me finish. Any evidence for that? You better let me finish or I'm going to hang up on you. Do okay. you not understand the difference between I do not accept X and I think X is false? Do you not understand the difference? Yes, I do. Okay. What I said was, I do not accept necessarily that something cannot come from nothing. I did not assert that something can come from nothing. I was going to go to the Lawrence Krauss example specifically so that we could actually have a discussion about what, what you mean by nothing. Because what physicists mean by nothing is different from what other people mean by nothing. And I needed to do that for clarity. Okay. Well, what I mean by nothing is, is, is um, uh, non-existence. Sure, and I still don't accept that that, that 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 is a truism. I accept that inductive reasoning would lead us to believe that that's most probably true, but we cannot assert absolutely that it is impossible for something to come from nothing because there is no way to examine and test that. Okay, so... So are you agreeing with that? Okay, N no, I, I don't I don't. What I think is well, interesting... Why don't you agree with it? I'm willing to go ahead and agree with it, but as long as you're willing to agree that the evidence that we have indicates... We, we have no positive evidence that shows that something comes from nothing. Do we sure. have an example agree with of nothing? That? But, sure, but we don't have, as, okay. Tracy, as Tracy pointed out, we don't have an example of nothing from which okay. to draw. As long as, as long as you would agree with that, 
and, and, and not only that, but keep this in mind, Matt. If we assume that something can come from nothing, then all science goes out the window anyways. We're not assuming science that. science is entirely based upon the law of cause and effect. We're not and assuming so, that. We're not assuming. How many, well, how many times do I have to explain this? We're not assuming that something can come from nothing. I'm saying okay. that the simple assertion that it is impossible for something to come from nothing is a position that you have not actually justified. And if you just appeal to all of the evidence that we have available, you are making a huge argument from ignorance right off right. the beginning. Because right we don't bat. have nothing available to examine. Correct? Okay. Correct? No, no I, I, don't, I don't think that is correct. I well, think it's very, it's very possible for, if, if you were going to go ahead and make the claim, it's sort of like when I say there's a God. How do you prove, when, when how do I you prove, there's a God, how do you prove that something can't come from nothing? Um, now, do you notice what you just did? Yes, you I put the burden of proof on your damn claim. When a Christian calls in and says that there's God, you, you, you say, how, how can you go ahead and, and, and prove that God doesn't, when they call in and say, or you ask the question, how can you prove that God doesn't exist? It's not up to, it's, it's not up to Correct. you to argue that God doesn't exist. It's Correct. Up, I believe it's up to the Christian to prove God exists. Correct. So and in it, this case, it's not up. Correct. And for the person who's asserting that something can't come from nothing, it is their responsibility to prove their case. Can you do that? There, there you go. So can we accept premise one and I'll move to premise two? No. Can you demonstrate premise one? Premise one is demonstrated by the fact that the only example of, of anything that we have is that every effect has a cause for something to well, come into existence. Well, 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 well. First of all, um, you changed all the language in there, but premise number one is something that needs to actually be demonstrated. And my, my question to you was actually, can you demonstrate it? And so far, the only thing you've offered is that, well, all the evidence that we have seems to point that direction, and we don't have any evidence that contradicts it. Well, that's really cool, and it's a good way to say that it's probably true that something can't come from nothing, but it is not an absolute. Okay. What we have demonstrated... Okay. Let's, let's do this. You know what, man? I'm happy to say it's probably true, because I think that the evidence sides with that. Sure. How about if Go we ahead. just say, you know what, it's probably true, and if you can figure out a way to contradict it, then right. we'll accept it. I, I have no, 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 no. Well, I have something I just Go want ahead. to assert. All what, what you're really asserting, and the, and the thing that is dem demonstrable, is something can come from something. We don't have a nothing to see whether or not anything can come from it. So that a claim that regards nothing is the useless claim. All, all what you're saying is we have a lot of examples of something coming from something. In fact, every example we have is something coming from something else. And I understand that. But to say that something can't come from nothing, you have to have a nothing. And I've never seen that, so I don't know what, even what that is. And, and, just, and even though we might agree that it's probable, as a matter of inductive reasoning, we don't just assume that it's true and continue on, because that is logic based on probability, and I'm talking about syllogistic logic. Okay, so if we take Kant, Kant said, from nothing, nothing comes. Um, I don't care what Kant says any more than I cared what you said or what Captain Kirk says. As I said before, the arguments stand and fall on their own merits, not, on the, right. not on in the merits of the individual. So there's okay, no point let's, citing let's, Kant let's, because let's, I think Kant was wrong there. Yeah, really. Okay, again, what yes. I want you to notice is when you say that you think he's wrong, I just want you to know you're putting yourself in the camp of those who are making claims, and you have absolutely, by your own testimony, you have no evidence whatsoever That's to make not a claim. claim, Matt. No, it isn't a claim. Why, why is this so difficult for you? Uh, when you? When you quoted Kant to say nothing uh, from nothing, nothing comes, I don't agree with him. I don't necessarily think that he, was, he could sufficiently make that case, just as I don't think you can make the case that something comes from nothing. That's it. I don't try to make, I think you misspoke. You, yeah, you, yeah. Said, I don't, you don't think I can make the case that something, something comes from nothing. I don't so, that. Yeah, sorry, something correct. doesn't come from nothing. You, you do agree that, that as, as far as something coming from something, that's the, only, that's the only thing that makes sense. Only because we don't have nothing. Okay, but what you're telling me is a rational thinker that logically it makes sense that nothing can produce something. No, I haven't said that at all. I haven't said that at all. As a matter of fact, I've said we can't, and Tracy's pointed out twice okay. now, that we can't assess that because okay, you don't so have enough. In, in other words, Matt, don't you think, though, I mean, I don't know why you'd resist this point so strongly, but don't you think at least that the strong preponderance of the evidence would support care. that something cannot come from nothing? You've never examined nothing, so how can you make any assessment of it? Hello? Okay. 
to, to say that you've never ex- examined nothing right. is, 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 I think, simply logically um, ignoring the fact that it, for, for nothing to be able to do something is a logical absurdity. Then you're being you, you absurd you when you, but you're talking about nothing as though it is something. So what I'm asking, no. you, you are, you're no, invoking it. You. Not, nothing is non-existent, it's non-being. What I mean, is you, that? You can certainly imagine non-being, it's what non-existent. Is, what is, give me an example of, a, of, of something that is nothing that we have examined. It is, it's to, to go ahead and give an example of nothing, in order to give an example, I'd have to give you an example of something, which would sort of contradict... Wait, right, so what are we talking about? What it. are we talking about when you say okay. nothing and you start so making... I just, wanted, I just want to know, you know what, let's do this. Let's go ahead and assume that you're going to reject this point. I just Are, are you going to go ahead and you're going to go on record as saying that you believe something can come from nothing? That's no, he has not said no, that. No, sir, and if you twist my words one more time to make me say something that I most definitely did not say... And and have corrected you on multiple times, not only will I hang up on your ass, but you can forget debating because you're demonstrating a, a, an incredible amount of dishonesty. Do you get that? Um, no, I don't think it's dishonest at all, Matt. You can email and formally request a debate once you figure wow. out why it is that saying, I don't accept X is not the assertion that I think X is true, and, which you accused yeah. me of multiple times. Yeah, you made it very clear. You said repeatedly, I, I think at least on three occasions during that call, you said that is not what I'm saying. Yeah. And I don't know how many, t- how many more times you have to say that is not what I'm saying before this person would understand. And if we do do a debate, saying. I demand that there be a vote tally. <laughs> Tool. RJ in Riverside, how are you? Oh. That was painful. Yeah, Thank you. Th- yeah. Thanks so much for waiting. I'm hurting um, too. No, no worries at all. I'm a huge fan of the show. I got to say, today's a good day. Uh, my two favorite co- co-hosts are on today, Tracy and Matt. Oh. Awesome. Yes. I've actually called before, uh, probably a month ago, Matt, and I, I, fortunately I got at the end of the show, it was you and Jen on, um, mm-hmm. and I was telling you that I'm a young African-American graduate student, and um We've just been debating a lot of my friends in the African American community about the problem of religion, and um, you know this, this, that last call really just got me off track. I'm sorry, <laughs> I had this really long point. To listen to that <laughs> argument. Really just, just breathe. Well, well, just well if it helps, from University of Arizona. So, if it, oh, if it helps, the it, note here said you were talking about African American churches promoting bad things like homophobia. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for. <laughs> anyway. Um, are you aware of who Michael Eric Dyson is? That's. Do you, are you? That sounds familiar, but it not. I, I'll have to say no, just because I, I can't no. be certain that I am. Okay. Well, he's um he's a professor at Georgetown University. He's African American male, and uh, kind of like an activist um in in society. And today he spoke at Howard University in D.C. to a predominantly African American crowd, and he was basically uh, preaching, if you will, against against homophobia in the black church and um although i still think i I disagree with him on the god issue um i just kind of want to pick your brain about when you see people moving toward the right direction they're not there yet meaning they're still light years away from secularism but they're kind of slowly gradually realizing that their morality is better than the Stone Age, First Age, ancient literature that they abide by. Sure. Um, and so, basically, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm kind of nervous too. It's okay. You you're, you're fine. We're all friends here. Okay. Um, but yeah, what I what I tend to do when I debate my friends is I tend to focus on the rather the hatred in the Bible because most people are going to pick and choose what they believe in as far as the Bible goes they're going to cherry pick verses what have you but when I show them how they are worshiping a God who hates homosexuals for no clear reason just an arbitrary we hate these people and you show that they're supporting this um, a lot of times they kind of realize like yeah this is wrong and so it's like I try to focus on those type of issues, those type, those types of debates, the morality issues, not so much the evidence, not so much how the Gospels 
are all written by anonymous writers and blah, blah, blah. But so much just the morality failures, the moral failures in the Bible. Um, just kind of wanted to pick your brain on. You think that's a good way of approaching debates with people who, you know, not like your last caller who debates this all the time, but just normal people who are moderate religious people focusing on the moral fail, the moral failures of the book. I would just say, like for me personally, I tend to to steer people away from getting too deeply into the Bible when they debate. But if you're telling me that the people that you're speaking to, you get good results from that and make them kind of rethink things a little bit, um, then I would say keep doing what's working for you in your community. Okay. Yeah, and and I'm actually you know a fan of the approach of, of that approach, pointing out you know. Uh, it, it's, it's only it's only going to get any headway when you're talking about people who actually think the Bible's a good book and and are wanting to take it literally, et, et cetera. Um, but it's interesting because it, you know you, you talked about um, this this individual who's preaching against the church, spreading their homophobia. There's a lot of of uh, Christians, liberal Christians, moderate Christians. Um, that are going to agree with us on any number of issues. The Reverend Barry Lynn from uh, Americans United is a huge prom uh, supporter of church state separation. And I find uh, everywhere I go, when I go to these debates or, or uh, lectures and things, uh, I constantly run up uh, and meet people who come up after the, after the show to say, uh, well, I disagree with you on the God thing, but you're absolutely right on X, you know, X Y, and Z. And, and uh, I think, you know, yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Um, it, it's, it's certainly an improvement over, over the options. Uh, and any method that you can make use of that is honest, by the way, I'll throw that in there, that actually gets results, um, I'd say keep going. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of pointing out uh, the Bible's take on slavery. It's, it's, it is, I think, the, the clearest and most uh, impossible to refute you know, issue with the Bible. We've even had, um, like when Ray Comfort was on, called into the show, we had to get him, he eventually agreed that he doesn't agree with everything that's in the Bible. And I, I thought that was a huge statement for him to make. Can I just ask you a question? Um, sure. When you're talking to people, do you find that they are more shocked by homophobic passages in the Bible than slavery passages when you're talking to African-American Christians? You know what's interesting about that, Tracy, is that the most common response that I get from people is they'll say, well, they just, they, they misread the Bible. They'll try to justify it as a misreading, a misinterpretation of the scripture, or that, you know, that was, slavery was acceptable at that particular time. Wow. That's kind of where they go. I don't really know how to rationalize that. That's, that's usually where they go, but with all the, okay. we have a lot of, um, uh, states getting, uh, you know, gay marriage happening in our states mm -hmm. like California and Maryland. And California is appealing what happened here with Prop sure. 8 and then Maryland. Um, I think just got legalized in Maryland. So there's a movement going on right now with, with, uh, with gay rights. And so because that's uh, contemporary and happening right now, I try to focus on that and say, hey, why, why do you have a problem with homosexuals getting married? A lot of, them, a lot of people I talk to don't have a problem with it. But I'll say, okay, well, if you're a Christian, aren't you aware that your doctrine is clearly against that? And then they'll say, yeah, well, you know, well, I, I have to do what God says. And so then I, I try to pin them in a corner where, I'm, where I'll say, well, think for yourself. Would you have a problem? If you were God, would you have a problem with it? And a lot of times they said no. And I say, well, I'll say, well, what's wrong with it in general? Why can't two people love each other regardless of their sexual orientation? It should be more of a moral orientation than a sexual orientation. I just try to pin them on the moral aspects. Yeah, I understand and what you're saying. It, it almost sounds to me, though, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it almost sounds like what you're saying is that if slaves existed today, then they would consider their Bible problematic. Yeah. But because it's we don't like, have, because we already went sight, out of through mind, that. What happened 400 years ago or 200 years yeah, ago, yeah. however long it was, like they, they, to them, it's in the past. <laughs> yeah, we've already hashed that out and figured out the Bible was wrong about it then, so we don't have to revisit yeah, so that. Yeah, we, we don't need to go there. Wow. Know, everybody agrees that slavery is wrong. Okay. But then it's like, well, there's still okay. other moral issues. And the last thing I want to say, I want to get to other callers, is, um, you know, one of my best friends is dad is a pastor at a huge church here in Riverside. I mean, a huge church. And I went one time, and although we're good friends, we clearly disagree on religious issues. But, you know, one thing I put on my Facebook the other day, and I got a lot of outrage and, you know, responses from it, it was uh, just a failure in general of 
black pastors to address a lot of issues that disproportionately affect African Americans, everything from income, income inequality to the poor educational systems and urban environments. So a variety of things, and even when it comes to um, gay marriage, which I think the black church and the Mormon church is probably the two biggest institutions that went against uh, legalizing gay marriage in California, and no one seems to say anything. And it seems, uh, to me it seems odd, because I'm tired of seeing Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. I'm, they need a break. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need, we need some fresh faces to address some of these issues that face us. I still don't think that religion, I still think religion is ridiculous, but I would at least like to see them deal or confront a lot of things that are affecting their congregation, and they don't seem to be doing that, and I think that's a failure, and so... Um, yeah, and yeah. as soon as you find a way to fix it, boy, I'm on board. So, uh, I wish you guys get some more callers, man. I know you have a lot of callers waiting, but I really appreciate the phone call and keep doing what you guys are doing. Thank Thanks, you for your call. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no thanks. Uh, Dominic in Switzerland, how are you? Oh, hello. Fine, Matt. And uh, how are you guys? I'm, I'm doing very well. Yeah, doing okay. Um, I don't know, do you see that on your laptop? I'm actually an atheist too. Mm -hmm. And I have a few questions about your way. Um, first of all, I'm very happy I came through. <laughs> a little bit surprised. Um, I recently started to study actually the Bible because I never, it was never that interesting to me. My parents raised me to believe what I wanted to. I attended, uh, the school where we had a uh, religion taught and um, yeah I choose the, did choose the obvious one for me not to believe in a, for me unjustified belief system right. and uh, then uh, recently I watched a religious from Bill Moore mm -hmm. and uh, watched a few of your shows and then started to read the Bible and uh, I'm stuck I can't read the page. It's <laughs> so ridiculous, this stuff. I mean, seriously, I wanted to see a, a sense, but on the first two pages in Genesis, there are so many logical errors. I mean, first of all, on the sixth day, God created man and woman, and then in the next chapter, Suddenly there are no humans, and he made Adam, and yeah. Yeah, there, there's, and there, there's, a, there's a, if you talk to Christian apologists, they'll say that there's not a conflict between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, that it's two separate accounts of the same events, one being uh, a literal timeline and one being kind of a, here's what happened in a broader sense. Um, I, I'll tell you this, I, you know, granted I don't know, um, your English seems to be very good. I, I'd recommend something like uh, Skeptics Annotated Dictionary at com, and also there's a place, uh, a, an online site called BibleGateway.com uh, that has a bunch of different translations. It's it's actually just a Bible site. There's no commentary or anything there. Um, but if you don't have a compelling reason, I mean, if, it, if this is just a matter of curiosity and you're finding yourself bored and befuddled right off the bat, uh, there's no reason to continue. It doesn't get a whole lot better. <laughs> Yeah, I made my uh, marks in the PDF version I had, and that there are some story parts, like, uh, I, I don't know the name exactly, but someone had a son, uh, actually two sons, and uh, one had a wife, but then God kills him. No further explanation, so just kills him because he's evil, somehow. <laughs> then God, uh, no, the father tells the other son to marry the wife of the one who's dead, sure. and he doesn't want it to because this, this would be like betrayal of his brother who's dead, and then um, he refuses to marry this woman, and God kills him too. Yeah, you might Why? be talking about you might be talking about Onan. Um, 
who actually did marry his brother's wife, but when he, when he uh, went, yeah. went to consummate it, he well, did not. Uh, yeah, you have to understand that the, the idea behind it was that if your brother died and didn't leave children, then it was up to you to marry the wife and then make children so that your brother had children. So it was sort of like taking over and making sure he has progeny to leave his possessions to. Um, and it was supposed to be doing your brother a favor by taking on his wife and then producing children on his behalf because you're the closest male relative that should, I guess, do that. But that was a cultural thing with them. And yes, it's a little bit weird, but when your whole setup is about a patriarchal lineage of property, it becomes very important that you have children, specifically male children. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, one thing, I uh, heard a few shows back from Tracy, I think, was the the thing about how religious people um, look, view these things. And this was very fascinating because I couldn't figure out how they justify such horrible things. And I think many of the people who attend church in my uh, town haven't really read the Bible. And I think if I would talk to them about this stuff, they... Uh, would be probably pretty shocked, but I don't do this because I don't want to upset, want to upset them. Um, one other thing I want to add to this conversation, uh, probably you guys uh, did this too, is the, the, the thing about creationists and uh, uh, thanks. <laughs> we, uh, we haven't got that many in Switzerland. <laughs> That's uh, good. <laughs> Um, they always use, they, when they want to present evidence, they just um, seem to point out errors in the chain of evolution. And that's so ridiculous. I mean, that's, that's no evidence. That's just uh, propositions. And uh, I, I, I just want to say to all viewers that are creationists, if evolution was wasn't the fact and it is false or if tomorrow it was disproven what's the, what's the whole point i mean there's not only two possibilities there are there are uh, thousands and more i mean really if if uh, yeah dominic i've actually evolution was the cause then then this, this doesn't mean it was a god or something yeah. likely and Yep, we're all yeah, we're all in the same boat. The world over. Yeah, religion, yeah. That's another point. I, I've done that. I've done that before with um, creationists on the phone. Actually, I've said, okay, let's just say crea let's say evolution is wrong, and let's move on with your evidence for creationism. And inevitably, they keep attacking evolution. I have to keep stopping them and saying, no, we're going to agree hypothetically evolution is wrong. Let's see your you know your evidence for creationism, and they go right back to attacking evolution. There is no evidence. It's it's all just you know the the the, the current model is wrong. It's like and, okay. And we're completely out of time. But thanks so much for calling. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for waiting. If you're still on the line, uh, you might want to hang on for a minute, and we'll see if we can get to you after the show is actually over. Thanks, everybody, for turning out. There's the list of people who actually do the work behind the show. Uh, I just show up here and uh, I don't know argue or something. So uh, we'll see. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Are we clear?